tonight report on why REC Silicon and Grant County continue to dispute the value of the Moses Lake plant. And kids throughout Grant County enjoy free Easter events. What's happening in sports, Dale? Moses Lake softball stays undefeated in league play. And the University of Washington women's basketball team advances to the Final Four. Here's a glance at our Weather Center forecast. Good afternoon, everyone. Temperatures today slightly below average for this time of year, but we do expect to see an increase in temperatures and a change in the weather pattern. I'll have all the details just ahead in weather. I'm Amber Jenks, and we have all this and much more on iFiber One News. From the iFiber One HD studio here in the heart of the Columbia Basin, this is iFiber One News, your number one source for local news, sports headlines, and our very own weather center forecast covering the entire Columbia Basin. This is iFiber One News, and it starts now. REC Silicon and Grant County are continuing to dispute the value of the Moses Lake plant. REC Silicon appealed the second determination of its 2013 taxes to Thurston County Superior Court. The move is the latest in a roughly four-year-long dispute concerning the property value. The Board of Tax Appeals re-evaluated the property value after Thurston County Superior Court Judge Mary Sue Wilson ruled the board should have considered a revenue forecast from October 2011. The State Board lowered the assessment from $904 million to $774 million. The company's attorneys argued the board didn't use the correct method to evaluate the value of the property when the court issued the order. The continuing issue is delaying resolution of the property taxes for 2014 and 2015, and the company appealed its 2016 property taxes. More than 40 classic cars are on display on Saturday at Big Bend Community College. The 32nd annual car show helps support Moses Lake High School students. Reporter Devin Higgins was there and has the story. Classic wheels of a bygone era were on display Saturday at the 32nd annual Moses Lake High School Skills USA Car Show. More than 40 cars packed into Big Bend Community College's Automotive Technology Building, giving onlookers a peek under the hood and into the driver's seat. Organizers Rich Archer and John Heflin said the show is also an appreciation of the aesthetic beauty that classic cars represent. Well, it's art. Each one of these cars is a piece of art. We have 12 different classes. And we've trimmed it down over the years to try to get the ones that we want. And they're, some of the classes are very popular. The truck class is very popular. The off-road class is very popular. Um, All original. Muscle cars, lots of muscle cars. Um, it's just the different classes, and it brings everybody together. A car guy is a car guy. Archer said the Easter weekend made for a smaller turnout than last year, but is hopeful more cars and more car fans will come back next year. In Moses Lake, Devin Higgins for iFiber One News. Motorists have until the end of March to remove studded tires from their vehicles. The State Department of Transportation is reminding residents studded tires need to be removed by March 31st. The deadline applies to all drivers, including people visiting the state. Under state law, drivers caught using the tires after the deadline can face $136 ticket. According to state officials, people should plan ahead as tire service businesses can be crowded as the deadline approaches. The Department of Transportation does not plan to extend the deadline this year, but will monitor road and pass conditions for any late season snow or ice. Columbia Basin Hospital has a new director for the hospital's therapy department. Jennifer Mills was appointed to the position on March 24th. She's been an employee at the hospital since September and has about 10 years of experience as a physical therapist. Mills replaces John Miller, who was a director since 2005. During his 11 years with the hospital, the department grew from one therapist and an assistant to a staff of 10 therapists who treat patients with physical, occupational, and speech therapy. Miller retires in June and stated he'll help Mills transition into the position. Now we take a look at people being sought by law enforcement. This is Sheriff Tom Jones with the Grand County Sheriff's Office. Each of the people you see here have a warrant for their arrest. If you see any of these people, we ask you to not attempt to detain or apprehend them, but call us at 509-762-1160 or send us an email at primetips at co.grant.wa.us. If the person is presenting a danger, call 911. With your help, we can bring these people to justice and make our community safer. 
We'll be right back after this. Here comes Obamacare, the biggest change in the tax code in 20 years. I'm ABC's Richard Davies with today's tax tip. This year's tax season marks the first time you'll be asked for information regarding your health insurance. Eric Smith of the IRS says for most people, this will be a non-issue. For more than three out of four taxpayers, the change will involve just simply checking a box on your return. That box indicates that you had health coverage and most likely through your employer. Others who bought government-backed health care and received a tax credit to help them pay for it will have to account for whether they calculated correctly. Kathy Pickering of H&R Block says there will either be a payment or a refund. When they come in to file their taxes, now they're reconciling how they estimated their income to what their actual income is. The IRS says if you're low income and not required to file a tax return, you don't have to buy health coverage. But for those who could afford it and chose not to, they'll get a fine. With today's tax tip, Richard Davies, ABC News. Now for your iFiber One News Weather Center forecast. Good afternoon. Thank you for joining us. I'm Ana Cristina Sanchez with your local weather segment brought to you by Barry Motors, one great place to buy and service a car. We do expect to have sunny and breezy conditions for tomorrow. For the rest of this evening, improving conditions. We did start off the day with few showers just out to our west and far eastern Washington. For tomorrow, improving conditions, but the wind will be blowing between 30 to 40 miles per hour. Windiest conditions within our Columbia Basin and also for the Okanagan Valley and West Plains. This morning, temperatures for us, you're afraid at right around the upper 30s. The average low is 35, so slightly above average for this time of year. High temperatures in the mid 50s, slightly below average, but that won't be the case for tomorrow or the remainder of the week as we do expect to have an increase in temperatures. For you in Moses Lake, temperatures this morning right around 37, average low is 34, high temperature in the mid 50s, your average high is 59, and the record high temperature was set back in 1994, the record high was 78. Our sunset at 722. Our current temperature right now in the mid 50s, mostly cloudy skies. Winds moving in from the north northeast up to 15 miles per hour, and the winds will pick up for tomorrow. We do expect to have a windy day. There is still some moisture left over over at the Yakima, and also for the Cascades, some snow still in higher elevations. Lingering showers also for the Tri-Cities area, but quickly improving conditions for this evening into the overnight hours. And as we go into Tuesday morning, mostly clear skies, plenty of sunshine on Tuesday afternoon within our Columbia Basin and also for the inner northwest. As we will continue to have drier conditions as the high pressure system will be building in and we will have an increase in temperatures for Tuesday. High temperatures for Seattle right around the low 60s, 60 as the highs. 59 for Long Beach with plenty of sunshine. Tri-Cities area in the low 60s, improving conditions for the rest of this evening into tomorrow. High temperatures in the upper 50s for the in the northwest. For the Yakima's right around the upper 60s. And for us, we do expect to have that high temperature well above normal for this time of year, but with windy conditions, those wind gusts up to 40 miles per hour. High for us here in Ephraim, 64, 65 for in Moses Lake and also Royal City, Queen Sea right around 64 as well. As you can see within the next few days, we do expect to have that increase in temperature tomorrow in the mid 60s, upper 60s for Wednesday, still breezy, but much weather, much better weather pattern for Thursday and Friday with high temperatures in the low 70s, plenty of sunshine still dry as we head into the weekend, low temperatures as of now right around the upper 30s. We'll be right back with sports. You don't have to drive to Seattle for exceptional cancer care. Confluence Health Cancer Program delivers world-class care close to home. We have a highly experienced oncology team in a state-of-the-art facility, and we're a member of the Seattle Cancer Care Alliance, which gives our patients access to world-renowned therapies developed at Fred Hutchinson, the University of Washington Medicine, and Seattle Children's. Together with the SCCA, we're delivering world-class cancer care close to home. To save some energy, I've used Einstein's mass energy equivalents to design the haptic suits you see in front of you. They will maintain our core body temperature while we completely turn off our heat and air conditioning. With the money we save on our Grant PD bill, I'll be expecting that trip to Disneyland this year. 
You don't need to be a super genius to save energy and money. Visit grantpud.org to learn how. The Chiefs swept a home doubleheader with Eisenhower Friday to move to 3-0 in Big Nine League play. Moses Lake crushed the cadets 20-1 in Game 1. The Chiefs took the nightcap 6-3. Brooke Richardson had a career day with a home run, a grand slam, and nine RBIs in the cozy confines of Larson Field. Marnie Skinner fanned 10 cadets and picked up the win in both games. Richardson's grand slam came in the bottom of the fifth in game two. Moses Lake Soccer pulled out a 4-3 shutout win at Eisenhower Friday. The cadets struck first on a goal from Jorge Amador, 12 minutes into the fuss. Amador slipped another shot past Chiefs keeper Eddie Reyes three minutes later to make it 2-0 for the home team. Goals from Daniel Sinchuk. Anthony Cortez and Isaac Martinez sent Moses Lake to the break up 3-2. Ian Reynoso rounded out the regulation scoring with a goal in the 51st minute. The overtime periods went without a goal, and the match went to a shootout. The Chiefs converted six PKs, the Cadets made five kicks, and Moses Lake escaped with the win. The dream continues for the University of Washington women's basketball team. The Huskies knocked off Stanford 85-76 in the Elite Eight, advancing to their first Final Four in school history. As a seven seed, the Huskies are the lowest seed to reach the Final Four in the women's bracket since Minnesota did it in 2004. The Huskies were led by star junior Kelsey Plum with a game-high 26 points. Star forward Chantel Oshahor dropped in with 24 points, 18 rebounds for the Huskies. The Lady Dogs now travel to Indianapolis, where they'll be matched up with number four seed Syracuse. This will also be Syracuse's first appearance in the Final Four in their program's history. And the Zags season came to an end Friday night, losing a nail-biter to Syracuse 63-60. Syracuse put on the press late, and Gonzaga couldn't handle it, committing five turnovers in the final six and a half minutes. Michael Jabenji grabbed his own rebound, made the go-ahead layup for the Cruz, uh, Cues, that is, with 22 seconds left. Jabinji, leading scorer for the Orange with 20 points. Tyler Roberson had big uh, for Syracuse down low, 9 points, 12 rebounds. DeMontis Sabonis, he was a beast for Gonzaga, down low, recording 19 points and 17 rebounds, 5 block shots. Not enough, though. Syracuse clutch at the free throw line down the stretch, hitting 14 of 16. Syracuse went on to win their Elite Eight contest against Virginia to advance to this year's Final Four. We'll be right back after this commercial break. Whether you're looking for a bigger car to support your growing family, a new truck for your business, or something to pull that toy of yours, we've got you covered at Barry Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram and Efreda. Come see us today and learn why your family, friends, and neighbors buy their cars at Barry. On Basin Street for more than 35 years, and with locations in Moses Lake and Wenatchee, we are one great place to buy a car. Call or click 754-2411 or barrysaves.com. We are real students, and this really is our college. My dream will change the outcome of my life. My college is allowing me to achieve my dream. My dream is to be a pilot. My dream is to be a nurse. Only you can determine your dream. Big Bend will help you get there. What's your dream? Our spotlight story tonight is about several Easter egg hunts on Friday and Saturday in Grant County that brought out hundreds of kids and their families. Reporter Devin Higgins has a story.
It was another wild Easter weekend for kids across Grand County starting on Friday night with the annual Afraid of Parks and Recreation scramble at Lions Park. About 100 kids showed up for the Mad Dash for about 1,500 eggs, which held both candy and prizes like a GoPro camera. It took less than a minute for the park to be cleared, and kids were soon on their way home to get a good night's sleep before the festivities resumed on Saturday. Out at McCosh Park on Saturday morning, the Moses Lake Lions Club teamed up with the Moses Lake High School Robotics Club and Boy Scout Troop 67 to put out more than 6,000 eggs for about 300 kids to scoop up. Lions Club members said to give everyone a better chance to come away with some eggs, the scramble was divided into different age groups. <laughs> Meanwhile, out at the Moses Lake Sand Dunes, the Sand Scorpions put on their annual Easter egg hunt with more than 100 kids bounding over the sand to pick up more than 5,000 eggs. <laughs> Organizer Penny Archer said the hunt is put on through the 100% contributions of volunteers and donations from several Grand County businesses. Five lucky hunters had a chance to take home big Easter baskets, and 10-year-old Moses Lake resident Lily Sheldon found not just one, but two winning tickets, which she shared with her cousin, 9-year-old Cooley City resident Madison Voss. So Blake's McKay Rehabilitation Center opened up their lawn for another year as the Grand County Fire District 7 Auxiliary hosted their annual scramble. Auxiliary Vice President Susan Grass said the event is a chance for the entire So Blake community to come together and do something fun for the holiday. We actually go into the community, we ask for donations, we do provide some of the stuff ourselves, but the majority of the lion's share is, comes from the community, donors and, and whatnot. This year we did over 9,000 eggs filled with candy and or prize tickets. And we had over 100 prizes to be able to give out individual prizes as well as the winners of the big baskets. So it was a neat, it's been a neat year for us. In Quincy, the Moose Lodge put on their annual hunt for kids in the fourth grade and under in East Park. This is an annual event for Quincy Moose Lodge. The men of the moose and the women of the moose join hands and we get together, stuff eggs. Um, we all come out and put the posts up, the forms, get this thing ready for uh, Easter each and every year. It's been a great attended event. It seems like we, it gets bigger every year and it's just a great, great thing for the community and for our little kiddos. And the festivities wrapped up back in Afraida's Lions Park Saturday afternoon as the Afraida Rotary Club welcomed kids back out for another chance to take home some more goodies. In Afreda, Devin Higgins for iFiber One News. We'll be right back after this. Well, one thing I knew from being a patient myself was that a dental office is a scary place to come to. And so we wanted everything possible to make sure that our office is a comfortable place for our patients to visit. patients that I have, my clients, have made me a part of this community and we want to give back in every way possible. before. When you connect to Grant PUD's high-speed network, visit grantpud.org to learn more. Welcome back. A man suspected of stealing a pickup truck was arrested near Moses Lake following a pursuit through Adams County. Adams County Sheriff's deputies reportedly spotted a stolen 2008 Ford F-350 on U.S. Route 395 early Thursday morning. The truck was reported stolen in Spokane. Deputies attempted to get the driver to stop, but he reportedly sped up and fled at more than 100 miles per hour. According to the Adams County Sheriff's Office on Friday, the suspect reportedly crossed the center median and drove north in the southbound lanes. Deputies stopped the pursuit. The suspect's vehicle was later spotted on Interstate 90 near Moses Lake. Spike strips were used to deflate the truck's tires. The driver reportedly stopped the truck and tried to flee on foot. Brandon Lee Blakesley, a 32-year-old man, was arrested for theft of a motor vehicle, attempting to elude a pursuing police vehicle, driving while his license was suspended, and tampering with an ignition interlock device. Hundreds of people enjoyed a different Easter activity on Saturday, that Lowe's Family Fun Day in Moses Lake. Reporter Joe Utter was there and has the details. 
Lowe's Family Fun Day in Moses Lake provided families a chance to enjoy Easter activities while supporting the Muscular Dystrophy Association. The Central Basin Traffic Safety Task Force teamed up with Lowe's to provide Easter activities on Saturday outside the store in Moses Lake. Activities included carnival games and prizes and an Easter egg scavenger hunt where kids followed clues throughout the store to collect Easter eggs. And with some help from the Grant County Health District and Grant County Fire District 5, 75 kids got new bicycle helmets. After getting the helmets adjusted to fit each child, the kids were able to participate in a bike rodeo set up in the parking lot. The idea of the bike rodeo is to teach children the basic skills and precautions to safely ride a bike. The kids were also able to get an up-close look at police cars and fire trucks provided by Fire District 5, the Washington State Patrol, and the Moses Lake Police Department, and the Moses Lake Fire Department. Funds raised from the tickets sold to participate in the carnival and get lunch goes to the Muscular Dystrophy Association. This is Joe Utter for iFiber One News. Five Big Bend Community College faculty members were awarded tenure and ten more tenure track faculty members had contracts renewed. The college's board of trustees granted tenure to industrial systems technology instructor James Ayers, welding instructor Clint Gilbert, chemistry instructor Lindsay Grosh, math instructor Bryn Harberts, and reference librarian Libby Sullivan. New faculty members are placed on probationary status for three years before being granted tenure. Big Bend Community College President Terry Lees offered his congratulations to all the instructors. In Northwest News, they say it's never too late to fall in love, and a woman in Oregon who turned 105 years old this week is living testament to that. For CNN, Kristen Hulsfeld has a story. The tunes of her favorite artist, Frank Sinatra, Molly Gruber ushered in birthday number 105. Everybody is asking me questions and, and taking my picture, and <laughs> it's really funny. <laughs> Minnesota native has blown out a lot of candles in her 105 years, and for the last 83 of them, her daughter Beverly's been by her side. Truthfully, I can't even imagine being without her. We are very, very close, very close. Molly says the key to a long life is healthy living. I never drank, and I never smoked. Her doctor's opinion? romance novels. She says she reads romance novels and she pretends she's the lucky girl. <laughs> and that is my opinion why she has lived so long because she loves life and she does love having boyfriends. That's right. Having outlived both her husbands, Molly continues to find companionship even now. And then another man here. <laughs> Oh, my doctor shaking her head. Yes, she knows about it. <laughs> With a glass half full outlook on life. Molly is pretty special. And she's been um, just an inspiration to me. Those who know her best say it's possible. She'll live to be 110. I don't know why not, <laughs> but I can't say I'd be happy about it. <laughs> That's going to do it here for us at iFiber One News. We want to thank you for watching, and we'll see you again tomorrow.